This video is going to be showing you how to easily saw the Master Nightfall, the 1340 edition on a Titan, getting the Platinum rank and your 100k printing reward if you're still leveling etc. So this is the Inverted Spire Strike which uh, if you've played Destiny for a long time you know everything about this, the ad spawns. However they've gone through a lot of changes over the years but it's now fixed rotation for Nightfalls and things like that. So um, this was actually brand um, newly done out actually now uh, two seasons ago or something where they added unstoppables to it at critical stages so they actually done a good job of uh, reworking this nightfall the thing is with it is it's not very difficult because there's not many threatening positions that it puts you in and there's not a lot of ads that you need to clear in it but i'm not here to discuss whether the nightfall is good or bad just to show you here how you do it um so with this starting section you need to clear the Cabal and the Vex. They are the uh, conditions to activate the Spire. To bring the Spire up to get the Scannable, which I'm sure we all know that. But I'm just going to state the obvious, because if, if you're a new player and you haven't done the Nightfall Edition, just the Strike one, then you'll, you might pick up little bits here and there. Pretty easy with this loadout as well. So we're using double unstoppable grain launcher with anti-barrier. So I'm using the exotic grain launcher Prospector because it doesn't get a lot of use and I want to see what it what it plays like these days and it's got and we've got breach and clear on. With the sparrow on the portals, you need a quick summon I think sorry, all sparrows now, there's been a lot of changes since playing this sort of nightfall, but all sparrows have quick summon now I believe. So as long as you do that at the correct timing on your portals, you will always be able to get your sparrow out and sparrow mid air like this. On that second portal, the one I'm just on now, you need to pull out your sparrow before halfway across the gap to the next. So just as soon as you go through that portal, spawn your sparrow as soon as. Simple as that. That gets you the skip and that means you don't need to clear all those ads. If you want to clear the ads, that's fine, do it. Because you're not really timed on Master for score. So spend an extra couple of minutes on certain parts isn't going to kill the run. It isn't going to kill your points. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. So this is the first real room of the th of the whole um, nightfall. What I like to do is first take out the anti-barrier below us. I'll debuff him with my grain launcher, whether it be my heavy or special, doesn't really matter. Just, you just need to manage your ammo quite a lot. We can get um, a couple of stuns easily enough. I just need to make sure that I crouch every time I use my um, GL as I've got field prep on it. Um, but use any grain launcher. I mean, to be honest, there is void shields, so you're better off using a void energy weapon at some point. Whether you want to use a void scout, vouch safe, with a kinetic grain launcher, do it like that. And if you maybe want to use anarchy, anarchy will be a way better run than what I done with this run. But as I said, it's something different. We know, we all know how anarchy reacts. You know, with Breach and Clear. We've been seeing that gameplay now for the last three weeks with Breach and Clear. And we've seen a lot of gameplay of Anarchy even before this season. For, for, for ages now. But if you want to do a more efficient run, a quicker run, yeah, go Anarchy. With your um, Truth Teller Void Grain Launcher. So what I like to do first is take out the two anti-barriers at the back of the room. You need to stand in a specific place so that both cannot snipe you. Um, um, so that just uh, is practice I guess just getting the angle right and the, they can't hit you but if they both hit you at the same time that could kill you since um, I haven't put on sniper damage resistance or solar damage resistance you're less likely to s survive snipes off anti barriers we're going to use a bit of heavy here from distance see what that does not bad um, despite it was you know we're, we're a lot quite far away from that champ so it didn't do too bad as long as you tag the unstoppable if the ads clear the unstoppable um, without you killing the unstoppable that's fine you get the points if you don't tag the champion you will not get points and you will not get platinum so make sure you tag your champion if you're not going to kill the unstoppable and you're going to let the ads do that which they can it takes a while but they can um, just make sure you tag him simple as that We'll get the Minotaurs for first because they are a threat, I suppose. This Nightfall has income and arc and environment and damage is increased. 
So I expect for arc damage resistant concussive dampener. The concussive dampener will help against environmental damage. Um, and the arc will help out against any arc sources, I guess. I could have went solar damage resistance. That would have been a play as well. But my Funder Crash chest plate is arc. So I just went with that. I just went with what I've got. So of course as well we use middle tree titan code of the missile um, just for easy quick burst damage on champs and things like that so it's well worth using we've saved our super as well which i'll show you why it just speeds up this room a little bit if you do so obviously we're not utilizing a cell build or anything like that um so ad clear is going to be slower than what it would be if you use cells i could have incorporated a cell build for sure but again I wasn't too concerned with using cells and stuff. I was wanting the more focus on the weapons I was using and my subclass in general. We'll get a stop with the unstoppable, then we'll use our super, and that clears both the anti-barrier and the unstoppable in one super. Just it just speeds things up, okay? Uh, that's your best use of a super in this room, I believe. And that's essentially that room. I didn't mention, but there is one solar shield in the whole thing which we've just went past you can shoot an explosive box or let the anti-barrier champions trickle down the shield of the solar and then you're fine you just take it from a distance uh, actually there's a couple more solar shields but we skip okay so the, it's only void and arc you need to spec for you don't need to spec for solar with this barrier again you want to sort of head glitch him try and get used to finding angles on champs that's the key when you try to solo them is that you try and find advantageous spots to fire champions. That's what it's all about. It's not about how quickly you're taking the shield down, all that stuff. It's nothing to do with that. It's more just find a good spot and then just take the champion from there. And you'll just find, your obviously, your life will be easy. The higher your power level as well, closer to 13, 40, the easier it gets. If you're below 13, 31, which a lot of you will be, then the Nightfall will be like contest mode or similar type where the enemies will do a lot more damage to you you'll do a lot less damage if you're gonna if you're gonna do it below that then use a proper loadout use weapons that are going to be effective if you don't have said weapons that are going to be effective and you're struggling just find a team i'll say that all the time i obviously my channel is mainly solo but i don't expect people to be like, i've got to do everything solo not everyone everyone's like that and if you're under leveled as well You've got nothing to prove, you just want to level up. You level up for the season, then you have fun later on. That's how I play the game anyways. So with this section, you've got two barriers, one unstoppable. This little um, raised section here, I'll call it, you can sort of fight the enemies and the unstoppable cannot push you because you're arranged, uh, you're above uh, ground level. So the unstoppable can't take you and the barriers can't snipe you. So it's the best place to stand to easily take them. And you can take them out various ways. You can take them just with your scout. Any explosive scout is going to be best. If you want to use your night watch that's got explosive on, use it. If you've got a good hung jury, use it. Whatever explosive scout you've got, use. Simple as. Um, as you do a lot more damage with that type of scout. Again, it's not required. Not on masters. You can still take down a shield without an explosive style weapon. I'm just saying that the explosive style weapons are a hell of a lot easier to sort of use when you're doing end game stuff. Now we'll take the unstoppable. So the unstoppable last, essentially. Now I don't know why, but the unstoppable stopped fighting. Generally he doesn't do that. I remember last time doing this, he didn't just stand idle, he actually fights the barriers. So you can get additional damage on the barriers while the, the fighting each of that didn't happen. I don't know why. Always remember on ammo, everything, remember for primary, special, heavy. Now, you can actually get back to this location here, and I'm going to do that because I want heavy. Okay, because Prospector holds quite a bit of ammo, but you can also shred through that heavy. It's not like Anarchy, where you use a couple. You've got to use a good bit to get a decent amount of damage out. So be very cautious, and put on GL Finders and scavengers put all on all your ammo perks my build was just protective light with taking charge 
nothing fancy I could have done high energy fire which would have worked out good at the boss anything will work whatever you want to do I just ran protective because I know some people aren't as high as me so this setup would still apply to somebody who's like 30s. they're still going to be able to do it and the best choice would still be probably protective light for them so with this battlefield area I've skipped all the ads and the freshers behind we don't need to, to do any of that the only two th uh, couple things we need to do is take the barrier champion in middle there's only one in this location and then the two uh, key targets are arc shielded captains so we can take them safely from locations like so this little window here we can just keep blinding him um, and just use our nade or your know, heavy whatever you want to do with him but if you keep me in a blinded state you can actually override his match game shield as well so because of how powerful breach and clear it is you can use say like a void gl on an unmatched shield and still taking two three shots so it's not as important to match shields as what it would be on any other season where it's double primary heavy doesn't matter so much because you've got a grain launcher that acts like tractor cannon so you're fine really we use our super on the middle barrier because that just saves on ammo when well, you want to conserve on ammo as much as possible um, so using a the super there's good because we're gonna get our super back for when we really uh, want it anyways um, so it's a good place to use this get a cooldown for another simple as we can then use the ads on the battlefield at the other side of the map to gain more super and stuff like that not required like it's not essential to do that I could just skip these ads kill the other blood guard the actually uh, captain <coughs> we could do that and then just move on but again we're, we're going for super here on this what I could have done as well is get a blind on a lot of the ads and use my um, melee ability on core of the missile the mini um, death from above style attack and get increased super you'll see me use that here and there I could have used it way more but this was like sort of first time coming on on reset so this run isn't fully optimized but I won't have much time this week to be doing a lot of runs so I'd rather have a run up than not have one up because if I don't have one up people are going to say well, where's your run at and then when you do put a run up and it's not fully optimized you're going to say oh it's not optimized so you can't win sometimes with some people but some people sometimes you're just looking to get something done okay um and then move on f until i'm free on an another couple of days it, that's just how it works some people are busy in this world and can't just play a game 24 7 okay some people have other things going on so we're picking up all our ammo make sure you do maximum there's two solar shields above uh, in front of us when we're skipping them as i said if you do take them out though uh there'll be another two spawn and the cabal ball could kill you when you move making your way over this is environmental damage getting increased i'm sure because they're doing massive damage to me so be careful of those uh cabal with their void i don't know why i was getting damaged so much i guess it's the mod so with this bit you want to do as many blind nades as you can uh, and you want to use cover as much as possible and only um, show yourself when you you know ready to stop a champ obviously we're doing sort of little grain launcher you can't just always stop it works that every time you uh, equip your grain launcher you get a three second timer to do a stop so you might be sitting in cover thinking you've you're going to stop a champ and you've forgot to do the swap so always make sure that because if you don't it'll boop you off the off the map and it's a death it doesn't matter because extinguish isn't on but still you don't want to die really you just want to get your run done so i'm being conservative here and just using my energy grey launcher instead which does relatively a lot of damage despite it's only got blind nades on so it gets reduced damage that way breach and clear kind of helps out with it but you'd rather have the blind nades because it helps you survive uh at the boss and as i said this is more of a strat even though i'm at power i'm kind of doing it as if i'm not at power or using a loadout that i'm not at power with 
you can bait out this champion here uh, which is an anti barrier below this is a threatening this is one of the most threatening parts but you can make it very easy for yourself if you bait the champion like I did it's worth using a lot of heavy on um, unfortunately the prospector staggered him um, so I couldn't get the barrier shield from up top which generally would be fine um, but it wasn't so we played a little bit more risky but we didn't want to waste all the damage we'd done Okay, because what everything we'd done with our ammo there we would have just wasted because why that's dangerous is you've got a barrier and two cleavers Okay, if they both hit you that could be a death depending on your power depending on your resistance and stuff but that's where you can blind them give yourself a bit of uh, respite with it uh, and you you know you're always going to be safe as long as you're using your blind now there's no excuse for you to not have blinding nades I didn't make a video about it I was gonna but the tower has had a blinding nade truth teller for almost a week last reset it was in the tower to buy so if you haven't got one always be checking the gunsmith I'm not going to say it's your fault per se but it's been sitting there to buy so if you're serious enough about PvE, you should have a blind nade grain launcher. End of. End of discussion. Okay, and it's been for sale. So we're trying to bait the champion. The reason why I don't stun him as he jumps down is because it's that thing where if you stun and say if you stun an unstoppable ogre, but the ogre's not looking at you, um, he doesn't stun correctly, or things like that happen or if the ogres sort of jumping up and down so if a champion's in sort of a transition of movement that's not normal during play like when he's coming down like that don't stun him i remember having problems with that when we first done this nightfall when it first got reworked to have unstoppable here and all that let the barry uh, let the unstoppable run around a little bit and then when you get your stun you know you've got it get your stun and then use your super because when you use your super that's a threatening section because the legionaries can wreck you while you're dealing with the unstoppable but the super just makes it more comfortable and that, that's the whole reason why we've got this super on because it's good on champs it's good on boss damage so it's just a, a really good choice to, to do also you'll notice i didn't clear all the dogs at the previous section why did i do that well because we didn't need to there's no additional champs that spawn there's an additional major that gives you extra points, but you don't need points. Because the only threshold that we are interested in is 100k. There's no bonus for getting a high score, which is a, a, step, a step back in my eyes. There should be thresholds. There should be things where people compete for scores in Nightfalls. I actually remember, people won't remember this, but I'll see how many people remember this. Bungie used to, used to do leaderboards for Prison of Elders. In their TWAB, they would launch, uh, they would detail who's got the highest points for Challenge of Elders. Not Prison of Elders, Challenge of Elders, when they brought it back, added uh, point score. And then it would be melee damage bonus week, precision damage bonus week. And you would put the team who'd done the best. And some of the scores would be like incredible, It'd be like, how have you done that? They need to bring back stuff like that, or add some sort of in-game leaderboard type thing, because... There's no point using all these third party websites like um, Shamalian or whatever uh, or Destiny Tracker because they're meaningless. The only people who care about them are sweaty enough to go on them and t to say, well, look at this. I don't care. I need it in game to care enough about it. So that's a thing. That's a video for another day, but that's what they need to come to in the end. If they want PVE, a competitive thing. Um, apart from world's first races and not, uh, um, stuff like that then they need to go the score route for nightfalls and, and other, thing, other activities that's what they need to do so you can easily control that section as you saw I just took out the ads from a distance then we baited out the unstoppable took him out in a couple of phases and then we skipped the ultra now with this section with the um, turbines obviously there's three levels you might not know but most people will the middle floor so there's bottom middle top the middle the middle floor does not have a turbine on it 
Meaning you don't have to avoid the turbines. That's your safe zone. If you're transitioning between middle to top, watch the turbines, then go up there. When you get to the top position, you can also avoid the turbines, but they can still hit you if you stand on a ledge at the very edge sort of thing. But generally they won't if you know what you're doing. Bottom is the worst place to go. Never go there unless you're going there for ammo and know what you're doing when you do it. Because as I say, if you get caught off guard, it's going to be a wipe and you have to redo this part. So we're just taking out most of the ads from a range. A couple of the phalanxes. They're not required, but I just wanted to take them out. Now I might get heavy, so we never know there. So we'll go to the top position. This is the best place because you'll have two barriers to take out here. And it can be kind of awkward if you're standing on the same level as they are. You haven't really got much cover. You can't do a healing rift because you're not on a warlock. So this is this is a good place to stand. You can sort of glitch them. Not head glitching, but sort of strafe here. You get cover from the rock in front of you. And you can easily scout them or use your grain launcher, etc. Try and leave a couple of dogs up. If you leave a couple of dogs up, they don't even shoot at you. So it's even easier. You might not always be able to get a shield break with the turbines. If they come round at the exact right time, you might miss it. That's why I'm trying to bait this champion to come closer to the right side of this path. So I can just still see his body as that top turbine passes. We'll use a bit of truth teller because I've seen I've got a lot of special on the floor. We'll go back for that. For, what, for whatever reason, and this nightfall's always been like this. I've played all the Nightfalls extensively and all the quirks. It seems to be that ammo has a tr there's a problem with ammo dropping. It might be because there's not many ads in this one, but I always seem to run out of primary, especially in this. And it's always been the case ever since it was launched. So I don't know why, but it is kind of annoying and it's something that Ammo, if you don't have enough ammo, you can fail runs on stuff, or it'll slow you down, or you've got to wait for the no mercy, you've got to wait for the mercy perk to give you your ammo back and stuff like that. It's kind of annoying, I'm barely using my primary, yet I'm run, running out of it a lot. So, it just baffles me at times. But, how we're going to do boss damage, this probably isn't the best way of doing it, and there is a better way of just one phasing it all one cycle in him when he gets to the third plate because there's three plates and if you were to get enough heavy and do everything correctly you probably could one cycle him even at my light if i used anarchy then i definitely could what we're going to do is do a barricade back here protection do eight prospective shots to debuff him we get damage and then we use our super it's important you debuff him because then that uh, is going to ensure that you do more damage with your super. So we get him half health or below. Problem is my heavy is low. If I had more heavy, if the harp is dropped me heavy, I would have used more than what I did. And as I said, a one cycle would be probably better. If you're going to try and one cycle him though, you save your super for the final plate. The only thing is about this boss is, it's going to be too much information for me to sort of say in this one, but this boss is weird with HP, if you don't meet a certain value on floor 1, he will become immune on floor 2 straight away. If you do enough damage on floor 1, he will not be immune on floor 2, meaning that you get more damage in on floor 2. On floor 3, there's no immunity at all, because it's the final phase. The danger is, is if you knock, your, knock his head off, and you don't have enough damage output or you don't have a super to finish him off. I don't have a super and I don't have the da uh, damage output to do it. So we, we wait. So because I know this fight inside out, I know that obviously the ads are dictated by his HP. But he'll skip phases depending on what his HP was when he landed on plate 3 on, th on this final floor. So I know that this is the second to last phase on ads. So that's fine. What I'll do is we'll use these adds to gain super energy to then finish him before the final wave of adds. 
So that's what we started doing. There'll be two goblins that spawn behind you. This is a good place to stand. Not difficult, this. We can use our blind and aid launcher if we're in trouble. But there's not, as I said, a lot of ads. I think they need to up the ad density on this particular nightfall. As out of the six nightfalls this season, they're all pretty good in terms of design. This one is, but this one's like the easiest one by far. And it's just because of there's not much to do in it. The champions are good, especially where they put unstoppables. That's really good. But everything else, even a Grandmaster, this will be the easiest Grandmaster solo to do out of the six. And for team play, obviously when double loot comes around, which it will at some point, the best farm will be this. Because you can do it less than 20 minutes, less than 15 minutes in a team. Grandmasters runs as well. So this is one that they need to look, look at. If they bring it back again... They need to look at open the ad density to match all the other things that they've done with other nightfalls. So now we've cleared all ads. We're not quite there on our super. Our, my intellect's really low on this armor, and I didn't spec out for the intellect. I spec out more for recovery and discipline. That doesn't matter. We're just about there. So the key thing is don't initiate this phase because if if you do a bit of damage but not enough to kill him, you'll initiate the last phase of ads. And that's just going to take you a longer time. Why bother? Just wait for your super, and then you can finally finish him. Eight prospector shots probably wouldn't do me. Anarchy would. Anarchy definitely would, but uh, the prospector isn't going to be able to put out the, uh, that much damage. But we'll hit him with the prospector, do our super, and then that's the run over. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.